Here's Brody Brazil. So you've started solo live streaming and you're quickly realizing there's a lot going on for just one person at all these controls, right? I mean, you need to worry about how the video is looking, how the audio is sounding. What about your stream health? What about your internet connection? What about everybody that's watching that wants to comment and you need to get back to them? All of that requires your time and attention and energy. And oh yeah, like what did you even start this live stream for in the first place? What were you trying to do that is also the main point of all this? And sometimes you get distracted from it. So what I wanted to do here today is explain my live stream setup at the home studio. Full disclosure, um, this is a huge puzzle and you will need all of the various pieces, either similar or identical to what I have, if this is how you want to put it together. But with that said, I highly recommend everything I've done here. I fully believe in it. And I know if you go a similar route, you're going to be more satisfied with how easy it is to live stream and the production value that you're getting out of it, how clean you can make a live stream look. Let me begin here on the desk with the brains of the operation, really the backbone. This is the ATEM Mini Pro ISO by Blackmagic Design. This is a video switcher, but in reality, it's so much more than that because my audio passes through here. It is also the device that with one touch of a button connects directly to YouTube or Twitch or Periscope or Twitter uh, via the Ethernet cord right out of the back. Um, this thing does it all. This thing is really a breakthrough in live streaming and broadcasting from home. So this is very special. And you know what? Someday I'll do a, an, an entirely separate video about it. Now, I want to show you the controls I'm using here. You're noticing there's two stream decks, and I am controlling pretty much everything from those. But in reality, if you just had this A10 Mini Pro ISO, you could switch sources. There's camera one. Here's camera two. Input number three, um, it's just a video clip. Uh, this is a media player I have. There's me interviewing the Oakland A's third baseman, Matt Chapman. Uh, that's just a clip I have running to show you. And then right here, uh, input number four, this is my computer screen. And eventually I'll show you the Stream Deck controls, how I have all this set up. But this also allows me to have software control of the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Everything you can do, in fact, even more than you can do on the hardware is done here on the software side of it. So again, Highly recommend the backbone of all this, the A10 Mini Pro ISO. It is your one-stop shop. I mean, this thing is so versatile. If you just want one camera or you want four inputs, if you want a ton of graphics and live stuff, or if you want to tape things, um, this will record right to hard drive. Um, this is a magical breakthrough device. Can't say enough about it. But like I said before, how do you control all this? And, and how do you get yourself into certain graphic situations like this where I can watch myself try and make a great catch at the Oakland Coliseum. Did I make it? Well, at least I fell over the tarp. But if you want a one push of the button to, to get this split screen effect and to get the graphic effect, or for example, if I want to switch to this, where now I'm looking at my computer screen, if I was doing a demo of some sort here, um, one push of the button, right? Because in the moment of a live stream, you don't necessarily have all day to be finagling with settings and presets. Um, so actually what this is, though, is taking you right to presets. I'll, I'll go back to the switcher here for just a second. In fact, I'll do it as I have it right now here. This is the software control, but these are the macros that the A10 Mini Pro ISO allows me to create. And this will help put me in those situations. For example, if I was live and I was on the main camera here, it can have me say that uh, with one click of the, of the button and the mouse here, It'll give me the graphic. It'll give me the camera shot that I want. Or for example, if I just want to uh, have a clean shot of, of the playback, I can do that right there. Uh, let me go back to it here on, on the computer to show you. Or for example, and this is a good one, um, I can have it wipe and give me an over the shoulder graphic here. This is for a recent live video I did about uh, the health situation and sports in Santa Clara County. So it allows me to go through all of these all of these different presets or macros, if you will. And this is where the Stream Deck in long form is connected to the A10 Mini Pro ISO. And I can also, like I said here, give you like a double box situation. I might use FaceTime over there uh, to conduct an interview and different, different versions of this. There was green and gold. Here's teal. Here's a different look for baseball. Here's one for hockey. So all of that can be done with simple pushes of the button. But there, there is one huge problem here. As of right now, late 2020, 
the Stream Deck software does not work directly with the ATAM software. <laughs> so that is that is kind of an issue. You can't hit one button and run these macros. So there is a pretty cool workaround. Oops, I am not live. Bang, got rid of that. See how fast you can do that? Um, there is a workaround here, and it's actually a, it's actually a pretty cool workaround. Uh, works consistently. It works reliably. And I'm going to uh, show it to you here. So let me get back to the Mac screen right here. And the missing link between the A10 Mini and the Stream Deck software is something called BitFocus Companion. And here it is. I have it running now. And I'm going to launch the graphical user interface. And all you need to know are two things. Number one, that this is connected to the Blackmagic switcher. It is. And the other thing is that the, the plug-in is good to go and it's running. And in fact, it is. So once those two things are established, I can come in here and I can create buttons that connect right to the different macros. Like for example, the on-camera with the live graphic, that is macro number one, single live number one. And if I bring back this uh, here, there it is, single live, and it's in the number one slot. It goes one, two, three, four. So one, three, five, seven, nine on the left, two, four, six, eight on the right, etc. All right, so I've labeled it. I've made that button. Simple as that. But now, how do I see it here on the Stream Deck? And by the way, I, I think I made this clear, at least I hope I did before. Two Stream Decks, the small one here, all for video switching, and the big one for sound effects, the soundboard, as well as different applications. I'll show you what's on the Stream Deck XL in just a second, uh, but let me head back to the computer here. So what this allows you to do on page one is to say, okay, button X number two, right, on page one. So really button one dot two, and let me just show you right here. Here's button one one, here's button one two. And this, so basically first page, second button on cam live. And so with the BitFocus plugin here, now I should mention that, this is what I'm using. If you want to use plugins, you go to more actions, type in companion, I already have it installed. Um, so you would click install right there. This allows you down here at the bottom to make companion buttons. You drag a companion button into the one you want, just like I've done here. And then you just simply put in button one, page one, button two, right there on cam live. And in fact, it takes that title, it carries it over for you. So you don't need to do much more than that. And so very simply now in my stream deck, my stream deck is talking to BitFocus Companion and BitFocus Companion is talking directly to the switcher. I know it seems like a roundabout way of doing this. I know it seems like a lot. I know I'm also not live right now. I keep hitting that button. Um, but it just goes to show you how, how well connected all three of these things are and how simple this is during a live stream to actually control. And not to mention here on the other um, stream deck. I should have been doing this the entire time. Or maybe not. So anyway, that is how you use BitFocus Companion with the Elgato Stream Deck, um, that piece of hardware. All of this for me, like I said, it just really works so well. I, I am keeping everything to high standards. I know a lot of times that uh, that I expect, oh, not live again. I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, I know I, I expect a lot from hardware and software, especially having the, the television background. I need things to work reliably, um, and they really do here. So this is how I do it with two different stream decks, the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get into more about the A10 Mini Pro ISO at, at some other point. You could do a lot of this um, with just this, with just the video switcher but it still might create a lot of work for you in the moment. I tried to simplify things here with as many buttons as I can. So let me know what you think about this setup. Let me know if you have something similar. Also, let me know with questions or comments down below. Thanks for checking out this video and I will see you next time. Yeah.